do ask is that you guys are completely honest in everything that you say, okay? Whether you're Haitian, Dominican, American, wherever you're from, we want to hear your honest opinion. So we don't want you to be afraid of the person next to you to not express what you want to express. Is that clear? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I definitely want to thank uh, Club Creole, Net Creole, Funk Creole, and Lhasa, and each and every single person for being here. Um, as we discuss this um, a very important issue, we're going to see it from different sides. We saw it from the sides of the Haitians that are being deported, and we saw it from the sides of the people that are protesting as well. So we want to look at this, uh, like, like what Club was saying. So a lot of times we see these things, and we go on social media, we blast it without even understanding what's going on, right? And then we sit here, and we think we all about it, and we're not going anywhere. So the purpose of this here today is to enlighten some people that may not know about the issue, and then from there, you decide what you're going to do. Are we good? Yes. All right, cool. So how it's going to work is I'm going to introduce our panelists. They're going to come up. We're going to ask them questions. They're going to answer for us. And then at any point during the question and session debate, if you guys have any questions, just signal me. You come up, you ask your question. If you have a statement to make as well, you can do the same. All right? Cool? So our first question for our panelists is um, if you guys know a little bit more about the issue, we did see the video, but can anyone just kind of summarize for us, any one of you or at least two of you, can summarize what's going on for us um, with the situation right now? Stashis? Hello. <clears throat> Hello, everybody. Um, my name is Stashis. Um, just hold it. Yeah. Hold it? Okay. There you go. Thank you. All right. Um, because I know a lot of people have been, you know, watching the media, but they don't really understand the whole history behind what is going on. And I did my research before I, you know, I, because I knew I was going to be on this panel, so I wanted to make sure I get all my facts first before, you know, I would come here. And basically, um, what happened, uh, there was a law that was passed on September 23rd of 2013. And that's when, that was the first part of the law that was passed. And that was, it was basically stating that children of undocumented immigrants who were citizens were now being denied their citizenship. So th this goes all the way back to 2013. And then this law would actually take effect from 1929 through 2010. And although the DR did give the people time to, I guess, register for the citizenship, uh, I think June, was it last week? That was the deadline for them to register, and that's when they were starting to deport all these individuals. But another thing that people need to realize is that they also, because I guess when this law was first created, which was known as the, um, see, I got the information for you guys. Um, it was the um, TC 168-13, which is the resolution 168-13. Um, they had to register within 90 days, but they also created a law called the naturalization law, which was um, started last November of, I think, last year. And that's when they were tr trying to get people, hey, I know we already said that we're gonna take your citizenship away, but this law will allow you guys to register, and we're gonna give you guys the those I guess months to register, and if you guys don't register, we're gonna start deporting. So I know a lot of people are upset, hey, you know, all these Haitians are getting deported. In a way, the DR was trying to save face, saying, hey, we give them time to register, to apply for this citizenship, but the issue is, a lot of them that were trying to apply for this citizenship were actually getting denied because either their last names were too Haitian or their birth certificate didn't look real, I guess, per to say, but you gotta take um, a fact that these people are poor, and when they were born in the country, even though some of them were not born in hospitals and in the DR, you know, because it's not a first world country, their documentation, like when they are, when they were documenting the people that were born in the hospital, they didn't have, they didn't kept like perfect records. So even they don't even have documentation on all the people that were born in their land. So even though people were trying to register, a lot of them were getting denied their citizenship. A lot of them, um, uh, they went to the, um, place to get, try to get their paperwork together, but due to lack of documentation, due to, due to lack of registration, a lot of them got denied. So that's where all the issue is from, but because the deadline was passed, and a lot of them are at risk of being deported. So just keep that in mind. Thank you. Thank you very much. Just add a little bit, because that was a great summary. <laughs> yeah, I just wanted um, to touch on the in transit thing, part of the Constitution in the Dominican Republic. So before, in 19, 1929 and stuff like that, if you're, there's a thing called just solis, which means if you're born in the, in the place, you are 
a citizen of that place. That's in the that's literally in the Constitution of Dominican Republic. But when the lady, um, what's her name, Juliana de Guis or Giuliani, Giuliani de Guis, when she tried to um, kind of like go against the law that said that um, go against basically the whole thing that said that oh you can't get basically um, birth certificate birth, your birth certificate and stuff like that and she, I mean, but she was Haitian so that's where the whole thing came from they basically made it in the Constitution that if you are born they they classify you as in transit in transit stands for people that like if you're a daughter's if you're a diplomat's daughter so you're in the you're in the country for like ten days. You're not in the country forever. So if you were born there, you know you you passing on. You're moving all along. But now all of those Haitians that were living there for years and years, they're putting them into the intrinsic category within the constitution. But the constitution clearly states that they're citizens. But they're putting them within that within that little intrinsic thing, and they're saying that oh they're not legal, and that's where they find they they legally you know bind it now. It's in their constitution that they can kick them out. So. I guess the issue becomes how can you be in transit if you've been living there for 15, 20, yeah. 25 years? Basically. Okay, all right. Did any other guys want to add something? I saw you guys shaking your heads. That was good? Uh, actually, uh, I noticed that your video did not mention that Trujillo was part Haitian. And that's important to know. You're going back to the history. In yes. terms of the history, there was a little, for those of you who missed it, they did a little sketch of the history. And they talked about the deportation and the murder of the Haitians under Trujillo, the president of the Dominican Republic at the time. And one thing that's important to remember is that Trujillo's mom was Haitian. And when we think about the DR and what is going on right now, it's very important to remember that this has a lot more to do with um, well, two things. One thing is the race issue, because uh, a Dominican who is darker than I am still, you know, does not consider themselves black, which is a very strange concept, but that's a reality. The Dominican Republic, um, for example, have they've whitewashed all of their heroes, all their national heroes are not depicted in terms of statues, in terms of pictures, as the, the original color they were. They are depicted through marbles, white marbles. So there's the concept of race, because when we talk about the DR um, marching Haitians out of the country, first, they're not marching Haitians out of the country. They're marching blacks because a lot of the people that are, they are deporting are not Haitian. They are classifying them as Haitian. There are endless Haitians living in the DR who are lighter skin, who are not at risk at all. So two things are, um, we need to think about is that this is a form of ethnic cleansing. Uh, and this is, this has very little to do with um, Haitian, being Haitian itself. If, when the history talked about um, when Trujillo killed the Haitians, it's pretty much the same thing. They know they won't be able to get away with killing the Haitians, with the killing the blacks in their country at this time, because there's the media. But it is the process of they admitted the Haitians to work their canes, their fields, when they don't need them anymore, and the population of people of dark skin start getting, starts getting too big, you get rid of them. Trujillo did it, and now they're doing it again. They're doing it now, and if, I would say maybe uh, 10, 20 years from now, they will accept a whole lot of Haitians to come and work their fields again until they don't need them. If any of you know something about the, the, the yellow, what was called the yellow horde in the United States. I see a couple of heads shaking. Okay, this was um, the whole, when the Chinese came here to work on the railroads in the United States, there was a huge influx 
of Chinese that came here, but they were welcoming. They wanted them here because they needed them to work the railroads. Once the railroads were built, there was a huge backlash. Why? Because now you need to go. The work is done. You, we don't need you anymore. You have to go. So that's kind of how you have to think about it. Uh, Ms. Linda, you said something earlier. And I guess you might agree with this. Do you feel like this is ethnic cleansing? That's where either, either one of you guys, and please also define what ethnic cleansing is. It seems that way, but I would have to disagree that this is ethnic cleansing. Definition of ethnic cleansing is the mass expulsion or killing of members of a certain religious group or ethnic group. I do feel that some Haitians are still being allowed to live in the Dominican Republic. You do not see them being all kicked out. Um, like the Germans did with the Jews, what ISIS is doing right now in the Middle East. Um, but they are being targeted for their skin color. So at a certain degree, it could be seen that way, but it, you cannot compare it back in history to what other groups have done to other groups. And I would have to say no, that this is not ethnic cleansing. I think it's impossible that you can't call it ethnic cleansing because the way they're actually telling people, okay, you need to go get registered and such, is by their skin color. If they're too dark, they need to get registered even if they're not Haitian. So I would say this is more in lines if you think of how the Holocaust happened. They said, okay, if you're Jewish, you need to get registered. And that's how they found all the Jewish people. You know, this is the same thing they're telling all the Haitians to get registered, and then they take that registration, find them, and then tell them to leave. So, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. Hey guys, uh, my name's Aki Laden, and um, uh, my family's African, Nigerian name, you know, his name that is. Um, but anyway, um, I just want to make a quick comment as far as um, sort of the nature of the a deportation and the way it relates to skin color. It reminds me a little bit of the Rwanda genocide, where, um, yeah, um, as you uh, know, the Tutu and Tutsi people, there's a little bit of, um, I guess, ambiguity about the distinction, you know, whether or not Hutus are actually darker than Tutsis or whether there's any sort of real difference there. You know, some people tell you there is, some people tell you there isn't. But the point is, you know, over the course of the genocide, a lot of people that may have been on one end of the line still ended up, you know, being treated as the other just because of that, you know, visual perception. So I feel like, you know, when I think of just what's around me of the history, that's really what it calls back to a little bit. And I think it really, speaks to you know the the real the real problem with it you know the sort of like elitist like a uh, colorist you know mentality that's driving the whole thing so i just wanted to go ahead and throw that out and that's what i had to say Let me kind of respond a little bit to the idea that it's not ethnic cleansing whenever you target a group because of their skin color. And that ends up being the only real criteria for um, harming the group in terms of they are not killing the Haitians, correct? But you need to imagine if there was no camera because what Trujillo did is he walked the Haitians into the, uh, the river and drowned them. The only reason that is not happening now is because, well, we have the kids on the internet and everything, you know, you don't want that out. But, so, we may not see the death um, toll, but it is still ethnic cleansing because what you're doing you have targeted a group on the sole base. They're not, as I said, they are not getting rid of light-skinned Haitians. They are endless light-skinned Haitians living in the DR. They are targeting a group of people based on how deep their melanin level is. So that is basically a decision being made on the ethnicity of the group. Oh. I just wanted to let y'all know about the media, because that has to do with what I want to say. Um, when you look at the media today, especially the American media, and when they touch on the issue of the Dominican Republic in Haiti, they um, picture us as Haitian haters, like we really don't like you. And to some extent, when you live in a country, you're born there, you're raised there, 
there's a Haitian stigma that sticks to you when you're raised there because you see your family doing it, and it's like the racism here where you see um, a redneck in the, uh, let's say, in the country, and he's raised hating black people. You see him try to transcend to a multicultural school, and you see the stigma. Um, when my family moved here and everything, um, and I see my cousins when they come here, you see their, their Haitian statement, you see how they, they make Haitian comments here and there. And my family tries to correct it, I try to correct it. It's not, once you move to America, you, see, you open your eyes, you're like, this isn't the right way. Um, Dominicans and Haitians are really not that different besides the culture. Your skin color is the same. There's white Haitians, black Haitians, there's white, Amer white Dominicans, black Dominicans. It's all the same until you get to the culture. And unfortunately, the media portrays us Dominicans as hating you guys and then Haitians hating Dominicans. And unfortunately, it isn't like that when you um, open your borders, when you go out and you see. Um, my family in New York and everything, they, um, they, they're disgusted. Um, Dominican Republic is doing something wrong. Dominican Republic isn't doing something right. Dominicans here are not. Um, for the most part, agreeing with what's happening. We agree that something needs to be done, but we don't agree with what's going to be done, which is a difference. They, even though these people don't consider themselves Haitians, and you know, they were born and raised in the DR, and they lived their life in the DR, they raised family in the DR, now they're, now they're basically stateless, but what is the government, what is the Haitian government doing for these people? And so it's like, yeah, we want to blame, we want to point fingers at the DR, but we have to take accountable. Well, we have to, we have to make our government accountable as well. So we gotta. I, I believe that the media is basically one-sided, like just blaming everything on the DR. But. Okay. Betsy. Um, in regards to bringing awareness about the issue, um, I feel that um, in social media, there's been a lot of people, you know, becoming more aware of it. There's been a lot more protests. Um, in regards to knowing, you know, what's going on in DR and how the Haitians are being deported. So I guess in a sense, um, I guess it's a double-edged sword. It is one-sided, but at least now people, more people know that these people are being deported because they're darker. So I think, like, it's a double thing, but at least now we're having a forum about this. We're discussing this. People are marching in New York. People are marching in different places because more people are talking about it because you're tweeting about it because, you know, because of social media. So I think in a sense, it's kind of positive that we bring awareness about this. Um, also with the media, um, governments move with their people. So public opinion really matters on this issue. And I think this is great what we're doing right now because really it's going to affect how most people view this, that this is wrong, and it might pressure our government with the marches in New York and everything to pour international pressure on the Dominican government, and not only the US, but also their allies and powerful South American and Central American countries also. What you guys gotta realize is the media is gonna report on what's hot, okay? As soon as it's over, they move on to the next topic. One thing I've been noticing, I don't know if you guys have seen, I've seen some very graphic videos on, on Facebook and stuff like that of what they're doing. But you know, like the video that we saw earlier of the uh, Dominicans in New York protesting, saying that, you know, we're not racist, we want to... I've never seen that before on Facebook. But yet I see the videos of people getting cut up and people getting beat up. And I want to also add that, you know, whenever things like that happen, usually it's a, a very small minority that's going above and beyond and, and doing this, these extremes. But that small group can make an impact on a very large group. Because as a Haitian, when you see a Dominican brother, you know, cutting up your brother, it's gonna fuel you, right? And, not, and it's not gonna be as, as, you know, impactful as you see someone protesting. Oh, okay, well, they're out there protesting. Well, thank you, I appreciate it. But if you see somebody out there cutting somebody up, well, what does that do? That makes you really upset. But the media, what they're doing is just fueling your anger. You know, uh, they're targeting not just, not, not Haitians, but they're, they're targeting black, People. Now, there are some that say that this is not even an issue of black. It's a matter of um, economic status. It's, it, you know, it's, it's a matter of, you know, there's, there's a lot of these Haitians that come in here, they don't have papers, uh, they're not paying taxes, they're not doing this, not doing that. It's our way of getting them out of the country or our way of getting them to report yourself and document yourself so you can pay taxes. So what do you say to that? And I'll ask this second question too. 
why should they be responsible for taking in our poor people? Okay, uh, first we need to establish that the majority of the Haitians that are being deported now are part of the economy. They have been part of the economy, they have been working the fields. So the fact that now the decision has come, and I keep going back to this because it's important to remember that the majority of the Haitians that they are deporting are not new to the Dominican Republic. These are people, a lot of them are people who some of them were born there. Most of them have been working the sugarcane fields for endless, for decades. So economic impact, we are not talking about the, the few Haitians that were taken during the earthquake or recently. We're talking about a Dominican population of black people that are being deported into Haiti. We're thinking about what's happening in the DR, but we are about to have a huge influx of Dominicans coming to Haiti who have no idea what it is to be Haitian. So um, economically, when they needed their sugar canes cut, they allowed the Haitians in. Why is it our responsibility now to take in their Dominican sugar cane cutters? See, um, when you give them the name Haitians, then what you've done is you've shifted the problem as if these are not your people, they're somebody else's people. Now, we Haitians, we, 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 we stand up for our own, so if you say they're Haitians, we're going to be in there fighting. But no, that you're not really fighting for just Haitians. You're just fighting because black people are being mistreated Black poor people, but nevertheless, really just black people, are being mistreated under the name, the banner, of being Haitian. So economically, we don't owe the DR anything. They've been there are years cutting their sugar cane. The DR, uh, the the economic impact of those workers is most likely what sustained the DR economy since they are their workers. You see, so I don't feel that Haitians owe the DR anything, but that's just my opinion. I think everyone has something to say on that one. Okay. So she's, Betsy, you got something too? I'm aware of what she's, she, she might say the same thing. Yeah, she might say a lot of things. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, okay, so I was shaking my head the whole time. I'm sorry, this is going to okay. I was shaking my head the whole time because I definitely agree. Because me, it, I don't have an issue about deporting illegals out of your country. Like, hey, if somebody's if somebody doesn't have the proper paperwork and you know they're not supposed to be where they're at, hey, that's all right if you want to deport them. My issue is that these people have been living there since the 1929. Like there these people had children, had ch those who had children, and now you're telling them they con they contribute to your economy, they paid their taxes, they did the little that they can to contribute to your economy. Now all of a sudden they're not they're not good enough to be in your country. That's the problem that I have. So it's not just they're not just deporting these illegals that just came to their country from 2010. No, these people had their citizenship based on the uh, uh, based on their constitution that they just changed this constitution like in 2013. That's what people need to realize. So it's not just oh these yesterday's Haitians that came into the country. No, these are generations of people like these 70 year old people that have been there since you know since they were like teenagers are getting deported because now they're Haitians. But all these years they've been Dominicans. So that's the issue that I have. It, it's just like if the U.S. decided hey all the people that had their parents come to our country illegal, you know, we're gonna take your citizenship away. And I just think about that. How many of us will be here today? So let, let's do it. Okay, since she said that. Okay, so, yeah, I want y'all to realize how many y'all gonna get kicked out. Okay, so anybody in here uh, American, but your parents are Haitian, like Haitian born? Okay, the bus is outside. <laughs> I think it, it, it really hits home when you realize what's going on. So I think what Sashis is saying, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, it's these kids that were born in the Dominican Republic, have never seen Haiti, some of them do not speak Creole, now you're telling them, hey, you're no longer Dominican, you gotta go back home. When home for them is DR, okay? So that's, that's, that's the issue, that's how I want you guys to take a look at it. 
But at the same time, yeah, I'm gonna take you, brother, I'm gonna take you. At the same time, too, I want you guys to look at it from both perspectives. You came into my country illegal, you're not paying taxes. Not them, it was their, it was their, it was their parents. Oh, hold on now, hold on, 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 wait, no, 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 wait, no, no, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just throwing something out there. If it's incorrect, that's why I said, correct me if I'm wrong, okay? All right, so these are opinions that I'm hearing. These, these are not, these are not, you know, my facts. These are, these are, I would say, people's perspectives and opinions, right? So people came in here, they're not paying taxes, uh, I want you out of my country, okay? These are some opinions, like I said, okay? Um, I think I had a brother in the hand that, that raised his hand in that one over here, so you guys can come up. And Ms. Linda, I'm, I think I'm gonna let you say something, Ms. Linda. Uh, just a little parenthesis, something to keep in mind. There are very few countries in the world where Europeans were imported into the country to lighten the country's population. The DR is one of them. We need to remember what's at the core of this, you know, uh, expulsion. Yeah, I'm Luke. Uh, my, my question is, if you were a Dominican, if you were raised in Dominican Republic, you were born there, and you were taught the history from the perspective of the Dominican, I think you would have the same feeling towards Haitian. So I'm trying to put myself in their shoes and trying to understand how does this happen, you know? This animosity, this, this, this hatred towards Haitian. And I watched a documentary that uh, Dr. Gates Jr., uh, he went to both parties in Haiti and the Dominican Republic, and it was a constant kind of like, it was a decision from the Dominican to have lighter skinned people. And just like she said, that's exactly what happened. They wanted to be lighter. They didn't want to identify themselves with the Africans. They wanted to identify with Europeans. And in my opinion, there's nothing wrong with that. You could choose to line your, your people. If you don't force people to do it, if you don't force people into having sex and making babies and stuff like that. You can choose that. I don't think that's a problem. My problem is that it's more like an educational problem. So the Dominicans, for the most part, they don't really understand what the government is doing. I think that's the problem. Once they know, they're probably going to have a different you know, look at the situation. That was my comment. But I'm Daniel Joseph. I'm actually the co-creator of the video. And just like you, I had to do a whole bunch of research because I didn't want to seem too biased. Actually, my the president helped me with that. I didn't want to seem too biased to say, oh, you know, Dominicans are in the right and Haitians are in the wrong, or Haitians are in the wrong and Dominicans are all right. But one thing I, one video I saw which really hit to what you said, it's just dark people because. I don't know if anyone's aware of Vice News, because most of the footage we received was through Vice News. And they went to a they went to a village away from the um, away from Sydney Lane, which is the capital, and it's just an ordinary village. There's just people, modest people just planning, and they're like, I have children and they're dark, but we've literally been living here all our lives, but they never been registered. So you have to realize, it's not just Haitians that have been here forever that have not been registered, it's Dominicans that have also been here forever that haven't been registered. And what happened was, this kid went to school, and they told him, where's your papers? He's like, I'm Dominican, what are you talking about, where are my papers? I was like, you don't have your papers, you're going, you're going home. So it really hits home that it's not just Haitian people, it's just, it's really Dominicans too, because you have Dominicans that, they know that they're Dominican, they've been Dominican all their life, but even people that don't have papers, they've been here forever, because you have to remember, like everyone in the United States has papers because we have computers, we have all these systems, but if you're in a village that has not even a single computer, like who are you gonna go to? There's no local library, how can you say, or have papers and there's no place to get papers from? So. It's not just Haitians, it's, it's everyone in the island. So if you don't have papers, so you could be literally in the outskirts of nowhere and not have papers because you don't have the resources, you will be kicked out. But it really depends on how they plan on executing it because really, I didn't know about this about two weeks ago until I did all the research, but some of the videos we pulled up, they were literally about four years old, literally right after the earthquake. So even though you know by now, this has been going on for as long as 
can be, but now it's like official, so we don't have to deport you. We could say that we're deporting you because now it is in law to deport you. So it's always been happening, but now they actually have the the authority, the license to actually pursue it even further than how, what they're doing it now. So it's not an issue that just happened overnight. It's now they got the gas pedal. They're about to okay. crank it in, but okay. Yeah. <laughs>